Hello and welcome back to the channel. Well, apparently Donald Trump has given some parting gifts to some of his friends. He's given some pardons. And one in particular I want to talk about is Kwame Kilpatrick. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Kwame Kilpatrick is the ex-mayor of Detroit and he has been granted clemency by Donald Trump. They are commuting his sentence. So a lot of you are, may not be familiar with what uh, he was involved in, but it goes beyond just what he did in the city, okay? Um, he was sentenced to, uh, I believe, 28 years, and that sentence has been commuted. And Donald Trump is the one who did it. Of course, he is pardoning a lot of other people as well, many of which were his friends. And so... To me, that sounds like an abuse of power when you can grant clemency or commute sentences for your friends. That sounds like an abuse of power. Some of you aren't gonna agree with that, but what about some of these cases where we know some innocent black man or some innocent black woman uh, is sitting behind bars and you know they didn't commit the crime? So because they don't have dollars and influence, they don't get that same type of treatment. This goes back to that old statement that says money talks. So if you have power, money and influence and you are friends with the president, he can pardon you or commute your sentence. Some probably are celebrating because just like Donald Trump, Kwame Kilpatrick had a large fan base. They liked him because he hung out at the clubs, he partied with the people, he was a good time um, mayor. Kind of like Trump was back before he was the president. He hung out with the rappers in which one of his friends that he, he also pardoned was Lil Wayne. And so, does anyone think that there's nothing wrong? Does anyone not see a problem with being able to just commute your friends or pardon your friends? There was another side to Kwame Kilpatrick's story that a lot of people don't want to talk about. I remember when all of this stuff was going on. Uh, we lived in Michigan at the time and there was a whole lot going on. A whole lot. And I've covered, it, covered this before. But uh, there are some young women who lost their lives without going too deep into the story and save it for all of you who are just fans but don't care about facts a very good and close friend of my my husband um he had an aunt that was on the police force and before any of this stuff broke the news before any of the stuff came out that um, um aunt of my husband's friend had given them a lot of information about what was about to unfold. And so when it started to unfold, we weren't surprised because we already knew what was going on. We already knew about the young women who had lost their lives. We knew about the uh, parties at the Manoogian mansion. We knew about the one officer who tried to, there was one officer who was trying to be truthful and honest about all of this stuff, but so-called black folk, they don't like that. Everyone dismissed him. He went public with his information and he was he was the one who was demonized for trying to explain or show what actually happened at the Manoogian mansion. The exchange with Kwame's wife, all of this. And so we are a people who don't like to deal with our sins. We don't like to deal with our sins. Those of you who would care to, there's a lot of information out on this, including the, the women who lost their lives, okay? Uh, there was one young woman in particular who, um, her son was very vocal about this. This was his mother. This young man was devastated. His father was devastated. But see, the black community, some, I'm gonna say some in the black community because there are those who do care about victims. Okay, but there are some who will take the side of someone knowing that they are wrong because we as a people 
have gotten away from how the Most High expects us to be. You will defend wickedness and unrighteousness because somebody is cool or because you like them or because they are your friend or because they're your family. Well, when you have that ride or die mentality, the Most High will deal with you and your life accordingly. But there are those of us who thinks about the young man who lost his mother, the pain and the hurt and the suffering he went through, the details that were revealed about this. There are those who care about those things and doesn't care about someone's fame and their fortune and their notoriety. This is why when you look around in the so-called black community, we are always trying to figure out why, and I'm gonna call God as you all call him, why is God allowing so much to happen to us? Why are our communities the way that they are? Well, the Most High Yah, that's his name, Yahuwah, this is why these things are happening because he said, if you don't walk according to my, my will and you choose your own path and you establish your own righteousness, your communities are going to suffer. And of course, I'm paraphrasing. You wonder why generational curses are running rampant in the black community. I implore you to look at White It Out Part 5. It's a six-hour documentary that is highlight, highlighting the curse of generational curses in the black community. Because we turn a, a blind eye and a deaf ear to our own foolishness and folly because we like somebody. Well, as long as I have breath in my body, I will cry aloud and spare not and lift up my voice like a trumpet in Zion and show my people their transgressions. Let me tell you something. This has nothing to think, nothing to do with thinking that you're better than anyone, nothing to do with looking down on anyone, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of Yah. But some things have nothing to do with just, oh, uh, this person sinned. They broke a commandment. They did that. Some things have nothing to do with it, that. Some things have something to do with you as an individual who make a conscious choice to defend wickedness. You want to hide it. You want to throw a rug or a carpet over it. You want to cover it up. Because you have no righteousness in you. And this is why the curse of generational curses falls all over the black community because we don't want to deal with our wickedness. But anyway, let me tell you something. Oh my goodness. Donald Trump giving these pardons is just further proof that even this system that people try to uphold is broken where wicked people can do whatever they want to do because somebody is their friend. And that they can say, look, Steve Bannon, Kwame Kilpatrick, Lil Wayne, and all of the countless others, Roger Stone, because you're my friends, I don't care what you did. I don't care that you broke the law. I'm gonna grant you clemency. Not only that, I'm going to pardon you and I'm gonna commute your sentence because you're my friends and I can do that. I wanna know what your thoughts are in the comment section. I know some of you are probably jumping for joy that he's doing this for Kwame and Lil Wayne, but what about Steve Bannon? What about Roger Stone? Since you're happy that these are being released, what about them? Do you think it's fair? I guess my question is, is it fair that the president of the United States could use his power and his authority to just commute sentences because somebody is his friend? Do you think that's fair? When you have real innocent people sitting behind bars, wasting away because they didn't have the money, they didn't have the power or the influence to rub elbows with someone such as Donald Trump. Share your thoughts in the comment section, family. 
If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share and like this video, and with that, I am out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel, and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.